Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Schutz and I currently work at MuleSoft as a developer advocate. Today I'm going to be showcasing how to create your very first Slack bot using AnyPoint Studio, the Slack API, and the Microsoft Translator API. So to get started, let's go into Slack so I can actually show you how this works. So if I type in slash translate into the bottom bar, that loads up the slash command. And if I type in a message, let's say like, hello, my name is Jordan, what I expect this to do is to translate the current message from English into Spanish. And as you can see, it says, hola, mi nombre es Jordan, which means it converted in real time successfully. So let's take a look on the back end on how this actually works. Um, and I can showcase that to you right now. So to get started, we can actually go into the Slack API and you can basically create a new application in the Slack interface. And in this case, I called it Mule Translate. And in your Slack application, you can define an icon, the title, and when you go to add features and functionality, you can enable slash commands. So what you'll see in Slack is that I've created a command called slash translate. So that means that in Slack, when the user types in slash translate and then any information after that, that information will be passed to the request URL, which I've defined in the second box. And that request URL is actually going to be hosted on Cloud Hub, which Cloud Hub is where you deploy your integrations and APIs in the cloud. And all of the data is globally replicated. So no matter where you are in the world, you should receive that data in real time. So now that we've created the slash command, Let's get into the next section of this demo where I actually show how everything's working on the back end when you actually make that request to Cloud Hub. So when we go into AnyPoint Studio, you'll see that I actually have a listener, an HTTP listener that you can actually drag from the mule palette into your flow. And in this HTTP listener, I have it set up by default, but then I have a path that says slash slack. And then also in my responses, I have it being a post request. I can right click on my project, go to any point platform and click deploy to Cloud Hub. And then that will essentially allow me to grab that URL from the cloud, which I'll be able to paste into here for the slash command. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log out that message that's sent and I define that as payload.txt. So that will essentially print out whatever message was sent by the Slack API. And then I actually am going to save that text as a variable. So I'm using the, the programming language called DataWeave, which is a functional programming language that allows you to manipulate and edit data as it goes through the chain. And so I'm essentially saving payload.txt as a variable so we can use that later. So next, I'm going to send another request. And this request is actually going to go to the Cognitive Services API. And we're going to send this message as a post request. And in our header section, we're going to get our OCP APIM subscription key from the Microsoft Translator API key page. And so when we grab that data, we're essentially going to be issued a token. And that's going to be a bearer token. And we're going to receive that as the payload. And when we get that token, we're going to save that as a variable so we can use that later in our next request. And then we're actually going to send another HTTP request. So the first request was specifically just for OAuth to grab your bearer token. And next, we're actually going to send the request back to Microsoft to translate that message into real time. So this is essentially the URL that you need to send your data to. We're going to say that we're using version 3.0. And we're going to translate um, from whatever language is input uh, into Spanish. ES stands for Spanish. And in our body, we're going to make sure that our output is JSON. And then we're going to format it in the correct format that Microsoft looks for. They actually needed an array structure with curly brackets. And then they need to define what text they're actually translating. And then we're actually going to paste in the text here. So vars.text to translate is this variable here. Then in our header section, we're going to have to have an authorization, which is the bearer space the varj token. So this is concatenating the string together so that that way the bearer token is valid. And then we're going to set the content type equal to application JSON. And obviously our query parameters are listed here in this URL, so we don't have to worry about that. So once we send that request to Microsoft, Microsoft is actually going to return us a payload. And so what we, we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert that payload um, and we're needing to grab the first text object out of that payload. So once we do that, uh, we log that out 
and that information is then sent to Slack. So Slack basically posts to Cloud Hub, right? Slack hits this URL and says, okay, give me the information and all of the translate translate information happens all on the back end here in Cloud Hub and then it's posted to our channel here. So that's essentially how it works on the back end. Uh, this is really useful for organizations that need real-time translation services. Let's say if one employee is a native Spanish speaker and they need to convert something to English, this application could potentially help with that. Thanks again for watching. Reach out to us at MuleDev if you have any questions regarding this video or this post. Thank you so much.